I'm Mel Grubbs. I live in Norfolk, Virginia. I'm a member of Norfolk Beekeepers. It's a new organization for the last couple of years. Frank Walker is the president. We're online at NorfolkBeekeepers.com. We also have Tidewater Beekeepers as the overall area here. If you see a swarm or anything like that, go to one of those sites, give us a call, we'll come get those bees for you. They just made beekeeping legal in Norfolk a couple of years ago, so I went ahead and got some bees. I started out with one hive. I had uh, a swarm, so I moved to two hives. Now I've had a, you know, a swarm this year, and I've got uh, the bees growing back in my hives. Last year I got about 60 pounds of honey uh, from the one hive, so I'm looking to get approximately 120 this year. As a member of the Tidewater and, uh, or Norfolk Beekeepers, the one thing I can uh, to ask everybody to, to keep in mind is when you see a swarm out in the trees, they're not dangerous. They've eaten a lot of honey so that they're really calm. You can actually pick them up with your hands so they won't sting you. One of the biggest reasons we don't want you to go out and kill the swarms that you see, you know, spraying them with uh, insecticides and things like that is something called hive collapse disorder. And that's happened in a lot of areas in the country and in this area too. Uh, it's when you go out, you know, one week you'll go out and look at your hives and everything's fine. And then the next week you'll come back and they're all gone or all dead or something like that. And that happened uh, to quite a high percentage of the bees in the country. And the, the thing that the bees are good for uh, is pollinating all the fruits, like almonds. The only way almonds get pollinated is by bees. So if they went away, you'd have very, very few almonds. One of the big reasons that Norfolk didn't want the bees and things that had to be talked through is they got a lot of festivals in the area. And when you get out to the festivals, there's a lot of sweets. Uh, and bees, you know, they go for that source of that sweet, and it's the closest source, you know. So if uh, I'm right in the middle of Norfolk, all the festivals are kind of around me, and the bees have a two, two to three mile range. Now you're, you're only allowed to have so many, uh, I think four hives per quarter acre, and I got a little over a third of an acre here, so I'm pretty good on that. My name's Nadira, and I live in Norfolk, Virginia. I am a gardener and an assistant beekeeper, um, as well as sort of trying to practice uh, sustainable living uh, sort of in the heart of Norfolk, which is uh, a challenge, but has been really rewarding. Uh, so it's been exciting to see it grow. Uh, we started keeping bees in our backyard because our youngest son has uh, really bad allergies and asthma. And one of the ways that our doctor told us that we could help him was to have raw organic honey that was local to our area. And at that time, there weren't any local apiaries. There were a few maybe out in Virginia Beach or out in Pungo, but we wanted something that was really right in our backyard. So all of the, the uh, flora that my son was allergic to um, he would be able to get the most benefit. So that's why we started. Once it was legal, we got our hive and, uh, and it's grown and now we have three hives and it's been very exciting and lots of other benefits I couldn't have imagined. This is our garden. It's early days yet for our garden. Um, we, you know, we plant what we like to eat. I think that's the biggest thing sometimes when you get started is like, what do I plant? Well, just plant what you like to eat. If you like to eat it, put it in your garden. If you don't, don't put it in there, you won't eat it anyway. Um, so there's peppers, because we love peppers. There's lots of tomatoes and cucumbers. There's radishes. Um, we have squash. We plant the things that we like. We also like to plant things that are very hardy to our zone, so they don't require a lot of extra water, which is really important for water conservation. Um, and we also try to uh, plant things that don't um, diminish the soil so much, like certain things that you can plant can really uh, break your soil down and we want to have this garden for a long time. So this is our worm composter. Uh, work with the wife here to make sure that we can have some stuff to put in our garden and you can see underneath how they are, are going forward taking care of everything. Now the bottom one here, this one is ready to harvest. I can take this out and put it in a bucket and then put it, you know, when I plant a plant, take a handful of it or something like that and put it in underneath the plant and let me get that up so I can show you. See how dark that is? That's all soil. It's really good stuff. It's got a lot of good stuff for your plants. And it's got a lot of stuff that fertilizer really can't give you plants. All the moisture that the, the worms put out goes in the bottom. And I got a spigot right here. Okay? I can open the spigot and get all that, that water out. And that's what I put out there too. Every now and again, they need something a little bit more 
called worm tea and it's really good not just for your outside plants but it's also good for your house plants too. I give it as gifts to my girlfriends. Yeah and anyone who's, who plants and works in their gardens can look at that and tell that's great for plants. And um, that's all about worm vermiculite. <laughs>